What does making sales social mean to you? You know, I think it is, it's the power to build relationships in, in, a, in real life and online in a very integrated way. There, there's, not two diff, there's not two ways to behave or act. It's all one and it should come across in your relationships that you have personally and the relationships that you develop online. You know, that's really, it's the relationship that makes it social work. Welcome to the Making Sales Social Podcast, featuring the top voices in sales and marketing. Join hosts Bryn Tillman and Bill McCormick as they discuss the best tips and strategies they are teaching their clients so you can leverage them for your own virtual and social selling. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Here are your hosts, Bryn Tillman and Bill McCormick. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Making Sales Social. I'm Bill McCormick. I'm Bryn Tillman. So, Bryn, who's joining us today? One of my, like, in-person friends. I love this. This has been four years since we've met. Keith Reynolds, I met him through an introduction through LinkedIn. So LinkedIn works and learned his perspective on content in a way that I have never heard it from any other marketer out there. And uh, I was fortunate enough, he brought me into Manhattan and I did a, a presentation for his group and we stayed connected and, and I am just so excited because, you know, content is the heart of social selling. Con the thought leadership is how we show our, you know, show up with credibility. And so I can't wait for the insights that Keith's going to share. Keith, hello and welcome. Tell everyone a little bit about you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I am uh, the founder of a company called Publio. And uh, we're a content strategy uh, and development organization. We help companies use collaborative tools and techniques to empower those who are innovators that are seeking to build influence in their space, uh, differentiate themselves from the pack and grow their business. Love, love, love to talk about how we can differentiate ourselves. But before we get to that, Keith, we ask every guest one question at the beginning of each episode, and it is, what does making sales social mean to you? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I think it is, it's, it's the power to build relationships in, in, a, in real life and online in a very integrated way. There, there's, not two diff, there's not two ways to behave or act. It's all one and it should come across in your relationships that you have personally and the relationships that you develop online. And, you know, Bryn, you mentioned we met on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and four years go by. I think we've had a couple interactions and then now you've got Clubhouse popping up all over the place. I think we were playing with Blab, as a matter of fact. When I we know. Met, right. And I now do. it's Clubhouse. And my phone uh, a, a week or two, I guess two weeks ago, said Bryn's online. And I jumped into the room and here we are being social again. So, you know, that's really it's the relationship that makes it social work. Absolutely. I was so excited to see your name. So it's great. So really, so you guys haven't talked for four years, but it's really only three because 2020 doesn't count. So we're, ah. we're just going to, we're just going to erase <laughs> that out. and and take that away. So, so I understand Keith, you have these buckets. So talk to me about the buckets. What's I'm a bucket the deal guy. with the buckets? Yeah. That's how I keep things organized in my brain. Uh, my, my crazy ADD brain, but uh, yeah. So I built a big uh, website um, that was, not sales oriented. It was a top of funnel uh, thought leadership piece for Kodak. In building it, we, we filled the, the sales funnel with $57 million worth of, of uh, business by creating a magazine. And we called it Chief Packaging Officer. And uh, we invested in thought leading content about the packaging industry. And we attracted uh, and grew our database from eight to 16,000 people. And when we went into our second year, we were told uh, your services aren't needed anymore because we just sold the division that you're working for. And what it turned out was that the division that, that was sold in the negotiations, they wanted to purchase the, the online media, the content hub, in addition to the company because exactly. they knew that's how, what generated the sales. Uh, so that company has now been purchased and uh, chief packaging officer still up and running. This stuff works. So 
out of that, I started doing some public speaking and talking about the seven buckets that you need. So you need to have a North Star idea that connects with your audience. You need to have content, uh, I'm sorry, an editorial strategy and an editorial calendar so that you're planning your content out over the long term. You can budget for it. You can assign resources for it. It's basically the core of your content machine. You need to publish and distribute that content on social media and through email. And uh, you also need to distribute it through uh, community and events. But I make that uh, something different than posting on social media because when you're out meeting with people, it's also a really great way to connect with them and have a source of content. Then you need marketing automation. Like, uh, you know, I'm a big uh, HubSpot, SharpSpring advocate, those kinds of products, Marketo, Acton. All of those are really become the way that you deliver content, but also through landing pages and email and social, but also because you're aggregating everything on a platform, it becomes your reporting and analysis tool. It's how you create a closed loop system to be able to manage that, that uh, great uh, unwashed audience to traffic, to proposals, to sales, right? And if you set up your marketing automation correctly, it, it just sets you up to do the monthly and quarterly analysis so you're always improving. Then you need to have a sales model. I think this is one of the things that really differentiates Publio. You know, working content into your sales team, helping them what, understand what's on your content hub, helping them learn how to share it with confidence and what to say about it so they become the thought leaders too, right? And, and uh, not just become an order taker, but we really want to build that that confidence within the sales team and extend the content so that it's in the CRM and easy to share so that it's uh, they know how to handle inbound leads and what questions to ask then how that you know when someone comes in from a piece of content there's a script that you can run off of that's different than if it was from a second piece of content so there's a lot of contextual cues that salespeople can use. And this doesn't happen automatically. So it really is a partnership with our sales team, even to the point of putting, you know, embedded links in a PDF so that we can track what's going on and see mm-hmm. how they're sharing and see, you know, the secondary and tertiary effects so that they get real information out of content and it helps them do their job. And the last bucket is an ROI model. You've got to be able to go upstairs, talk to the C-suite. You've got to tell them, you know, this is the value proposition. I love that. And we think we resonate with the sales piece. Tell, tell me, I, I don't understand this marketing and sales working together. The, the totally foreign concept to me, I, I, I'm, I need an- We must be dreaming. Help me, help me. Help me. I'm the marketing guy from heaven coming down. Definitely. You <laughs> definitely are. Talk a little bit about how this plays out. Give us a give us a real life example, if you can, of, of, of taking us through this process of how this plays out. You know, it's it's understanding the sales process. I've, I've set up a lot of CRMs. I am a sales guy and I'm a marketing guy. So I've, I've worn both hats. And, and in setting up a CRM, you want to- So you are an alien. Yeah, I'm an alien, yeah. <laughs> um, just as an aside, I was IBM's first collegiate rep demo, demonstrating personal computers in college bookstores. I, helped, I was hired to help write the manual. And then I became a collegiate rep, you know, in painter's pants and a rugby shirt in the 1980s oh. thing. This is a personal computer. It has a spreadsheet. <laughs> That's awesome. I had painter's pants. So I still do. Rugby, didn't wear the rugby shirt. So, um, but no, sales is really important because that's what we're all doing this for, right? And if we don't have salespeople that are uh, on board and, and really understand it. And when salespeople, when you have that alignment between sales and marketing, it's beautiful, Right. And so sometimes it starts out in a contentious way. Hey, marketing, you never give us any leads. What are you talking about? We sent you all those leads. All those leads were crap. Well, did you call them? No. All right. So let's work together and let's get through or, you know, if they're crap, tell me why they're crap. We'll try and go get different leads for you. Right. So it's that iterative process that uh, I think is really important when you're when you're writing and producing videos, uh, white papers, all those things. You want to test it and, and have uh, your, your sales team in from the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Helping with the development of that to um, sharing it and getting some feedback from customers early on. And it's not mm-hmm. like we're running out to a, a printer these days and running 
100,000 copies, right? We can make a PDF and test it. Um, and our sales people are really great partners for that kind of thing. Like I said, understanding the sales process and mapping out, you know, here it, it, in the first stage of our conversation, it, we, you know, if the salesperson says, I'd really love to have a white paper. Let's write a white paper. So I want to ask you this. because So there are some things, there's content that is about our company and that, you know, helps people understand our products and services. And then there's content that's truly a resource and insights. And they're used at different places, right? In, in the sales journey. Yeah. What I'd love to hear is like, what is the content that you believe will start a first conversation? If you're introducing something new, introducing a different way, right? If you're, you know, you, you have to get to what is it that the product m- makes the customer's life better? And, and then write some content that really helps make that point. Um, so you do think product content upfront is okay? Or do you think other insights? No, it's it's oh. like you need to get above the, the, the product solution and talk about how life is better. Yeah. Right? And and what it would be like if life was better. You know, you would have you know, save lots of money or increase your sales or improve your quality. And so you can write a whole piece on improving your quality. And the end point of that thought leadership of quality improvement could be that our product is actually really helpful to to customers to do that. 99% of that. So we call that vendor agnostic content, call that content that is valuable, even if they never talk to you. So I'm a big believer in that your whole content hub should be branded. You don't want to have a blog, the word blog on your website, give it a name. Like why? Like if you go to my website, it's, it's called The Hub because I'm helping companies create content hubs. The content within that branded content hub should look and feel, if you're in a B2B space, like an industry magazine. Like you're literally competing against the trade magazines in your market space with the quality of the content. And yet it can be the, your VP of sales or your president and CEO that's the one that's you know, getting the byline on the article, even, even though, I mean, we all have writers that write for us, right? But we can, just as our our executives go out to trade shows and they get the fireside chat or they do the the keynote speech, you can also now have a a media property that's as competitive as anything you'd get from the trade press. And, you know, again, that's, that's why when Kodak sold the division, they wanted chief packaging officer. There were over a hundred articles and thought pieces and interviews with industry executives um, that all, you know, made this this really rich content and every piece of content. It's the design has changed very much, but it's, it's very much designed in the the HubSpot, you know, funnel. You know, get everybody to draw them in, and it was it was very well designed. So we we did we had a lot of conversions off of that, and yet it positioned us like a thought leader. And oh, by the way, Google loves you too. Yeah. So one of the things we just started doing is creating the influencer of the week. So going out to the the sales world and identifying people that are making an impact. So I think that sounds a little bit about like what you're talking about. But you're talking about the quality of the content is like magnificent. It's not just a blog. Correct. And it's put in a place that's not just the blog page. You know, you know, on our website, we have that Bryn, but you think about our members area, we have the content library. So, so that's kind of branded in that way that it's a, it's a place. Yeah, where that's it, private though, not SEO. It is, true, true. It, it, it is, it is. I, I want to, so a lot of the folks listening to this are part of organizations. They don't have control over whether they can get marketing to talk to sales or, um, you know, or to have a hub. Right. What they're concerned with is, is creating content and getting content into people's hands. I'm curious about one of the buckets you talked about were was was events and getting content into people's hands at events. People aren't having events now. How are you having folks get content into people's hands at virtual events? Is that working for you? So uh, one of the things I do is I'm on the board of uh, Stanford Innovation Week, which is a festival of ideas kind of, you know, we call it North by Northeast kind of. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's great. You know, they only had 300 people at their first event at, at South by Southwest. So we we had more than that in our first, but we've got a long way to grow to become that. But it's uh, it it celebrates the uh, the talent that we have locally, and then the network we have globally, 
and we bring thought leaders together once a year in the fall. So um, it's attending events, it's doing speaking uh, on events, it's putting yourself out there as a public speaker because everybody's content hungry. I mean, that's, I think, one of the things, even if you're uh, um, the salesperson in your example, Bill, where they don't have control of the marketing budget, they're not determining what is being uh, created at a, at a company-wide level, but every salesperson can have their own content plan. So they know what content that is corporate that they can use. They also scan industry press and find things to share with customers. And then you can do things like um, live, you know, live video on LinkedIn and just do a two minute thing. Hey, I'm at a, um, a coffee shop and, you know, out sitting outdoors and I'm just was thinking about X, Y, Z and, you know, your, your marketing automation platform is LinkedIn for, for in this case. So it, it really, it's a scalable idea. In fact, all seven buckets work for you as an individual as well as they do for, for a, a big company. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like Fred Diamond said a few weeks ago when he was on, you know, you are the president of your brand. You are the president of, of you, and what you and what you have to put out there. And so for all the salespeople that are listening, rather than pointing the fingers at your sales leadership because they're not providing the right training or to your marketing department because they're not providing... Uh, the right content or the best kind of content, you really have to grab hold of it, grab those seven buckets and start carrying them to the well and filling them up and, and working on your own content. So in, in your experience as a, as, a, as a marketer, what content are you seeing right now that's getting the most views, the most ROI? I, th I think it's you know, content that helps you learn how to is, uh, you know, it's very practical that you can use, it's, you know, shareable on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that if, if you're able to take a big problem and summarize the how to solve it and, and the why, and, you know, answer the why within that, um, I think that's very successful for, for a sales kind of relationship. I love that. What about the medium? Is it video? Is it uh, white papers? Is it PDFs, eBooks? Yeah, what's the medium that's really working right now? I think the most successful content marketers are organizations that come up with a calendar and then really exploit all of those mediums, right? Mm -hmm. So that there is a white paper and then you interview the CEO who talks about the new you know, white paper and then there's a blog post about the white paper and then that blog post is posted on social and given out to all the salespeople to share. So it just, it, you know, you get benefit from concentrating efforts. If you just put it out there, it, you know, it's left to, to accident. What's your favorite to start with? Do you, like we start with video and then transcribe that and create everything out of video, but what's your favorite? To start I've been with? doing that a lot lately because of zoom, but my go-to is, is a white paper ebook. Like mm -hmm. I create probably the reason I've transitioned more or, or gravitated more to the marketing side is that I love to write and writing is a way to figure out so you can test and see mm -hmm. what messaging is working. So I'll, I'll write a really sloppy document in the beginning and then I collaborate with people and I get something that's really tight and then that becomes a blog post, that becomes an ebook, that becomes a video mm -hmm. and the themes, just, you know, so I've been creating content around the same ideas now for four years um, mm -hmm. since I you know, put my book up on Amazon actually before I put the book up on Amazon and it's, it's always the same ideas just found many ways to express it. I think that that's when you get something that's thematically good, you want to continue to build it. Now in a bigger company, you, you'll have several, right? Your small company like mine, I have one and I just stay in my lane. It's interesting. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but I had I heard an interview with Billy Joel and he talked about how he'd write his music first and then his lyrics. And I went, that's crazy. I would have written the lyrics first and then the music. What? And so I think some of what I'm hearing is everyone's going to do it differently based on what makes most sense for their brain and the way they do that. That's but fascinating. Start with one thing and have a plan on how to leverage that one thing to get out to everybody. Yes. So I've got a, a practical question because I, I know the questions that we get and it's what I what I wonder. Is there a an average size for an ebook, like number of pages, that's wow, kind of the sweet spot. Well, let's see. So my book is a hundred pages on Amazon, and I 
I purposely said I want it to be a hundred pages, no more. And we brought it in, you know, even with all the filler pages, it's at a hundred pages. And if somebody told me it's a quick Saturday morning read. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm making a derivative of that. And I think it's going to be about 20 pages and it's mm -hmm. just around owning, owning your media. Um, uh, so we've taken the material out of the hundred page book. We're making it, it I don't know, I'm not done yet, but a 20, 30 page book in that range. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a lot more open and have a lot more pictures around it. From that, I wanna make a video, right? But that's just, again, this idea of continuing to mine your, your media. And so what is the name of your book? Thanks for asking. It's called The New Content Culture. It is available as Kindle, and it's uh, also available uh, in hard copy. All right, and we will put a link in the show notes uh, for, for that for you for sure. We're just about out of time here. How can folks stay in touch with you and, and connect with you? Yeah, so the book on Amazon, you can Google Keith Reynolds and the new content culture. That'll get you right there. Also, my website is Publio, P-U-B-L-I dot I-O. And you can download a free ROI calculator that has a budgeting sheet and then a sales funnel sheet. And the goal is to figure out what's the, every company has a different uh, business model around content. And mm -hmm. this is to help you figure yours out. Great. Well, thanks so much, Keith, for being on Making Sales Social. Um, thanks to all of our listeners that come every week. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching and join us again for more special guest instructors bringing you marketing, sales training, and social selling strategies that will set you apart. Hit the subscribe button below to get the latest episodes from the Making Sales Social podcast. Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below on what you want to hear from us next. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Visit our website, socialsaleslink.com, for more information.